Hello and welcome to the Filmmakers Workshop. I'm Adam Loretz and today I'm joined by Lou Dejahang. It's great to meet you and to discuss your acting roles and the new short film that you've made with Richard Baisley, Confines. So Luke, you've been acting for quite some time. I looked on your IMDb. I got as far back as Grange Hill. Is that is that is that right? That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. If I can first of all apologise to you and your viewers, Adam, I am sat in a car. I'm, I'm on my way to a meeting, so my apologies. Uh, now we've got that out of the way. Um, yes, I started my acting career back in my early teens, and um, I, I studied as a teenager. I used to finish early secondary school and then jump on the train from South East London and travel up to North London and train with an incredible acting teacher called Anna Share, and it was just a wonderful escape. It was just the possibilities of, of acting and, and creating roles and, and literature. It was just a fascinating world for me and one that I, I just thoroughly enjoyed and felt free when I was when I was performing and when I was in the class environment at Anna Share. Soon after the Anna Share Theatre, I, I, I had a child agent, a teenager in my teenage years, and I did Grange Hill, I did Only Fools and Horses, The Bill. This was whilst I was at secondary school. And then after finishing secondary school, I went full time into acting, continued training with some wonderful American teachers that studied with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, Sanford Meisner, which were the prominent teachers in New York at the time. Some wonderful actors have come from those schools. So I had a really good base for my for my acting training. And then I was just working, you know, doing jobs. I got, I got a stint in London's Burning, which was a a wonderful TV show at the time, playing a, a regular as a fireman in that. And I did lots of theatre roles in, in, I did some West End stuff, lots of different TV roles uh, in my early 20s. And then I took a, a break from the industry and focused on the family. And then the, in the last two and a half years, I just thought, I love acting. I love I love the creative process. So there's nothing stopping me. And, and I came back and, and haven't stopped working since, since my return. And have a number of exciting projects in development as well. Yeah, I, I understand you've got a production company and you, you've made a movie, Bardo. Yeah, so um, when I came back into the industry, it was just literally, um, I came back into the industry and then, and then you know, we were right in the height of the pandemic. I, I sat back and I thought, you know, I've come back into the industry after a number of years away. I've got quite a, a good CV and a body of work, but I look a lot younger. <laughs> Uh, um, so I need to get straight back into it. So I started just to do some research on directors, short films, work that was out there. And I came across a brilliant director and a brilliant writer, the director, Michael Bake Clifford and the writer, Jeff Thompson. And they won a BAFTA for a short film called Brown Paper Bag. And they they got nominated for a BAFTA for another short film called Bouncer with Ray Winston, who I love, I love Ray Winston's work. I just love the, the naturalistic, real, authentic style of storytelling in, in the same genre and tone, if I, if I'm, you know, if I, if I'm so bold to say as a Mike Lee or a Ken Loach film, who I'm a massive fan of. So it's that naturalistic, almost docudrama type, real storytelling. So I reached out to them, sent them my work and I said, look, I'm coming back to the industry and I love your work. And It'd be wonderful if, if we could maybe have a chat and see if we can collaborate. And they came back to me very kindly and said, look, we've looked at your work and we've got an idea that might work. And they and they wrote Bardo, uh, which is based on Jeff Thompson's, you know, on part of his life anyway. And it's been dramatized, but a lot of it's taken from Jeff's life um, and quite an inspirational story. Uh, about a factory worker who who dares to dream as an aspiring writer. The story uh, really resonated with me. And then we made the film. It won the Birmingham Film Festival and it won a number of other awards as well. Yeah, then we went from there. How did you meet up with Richard? How did you find out about him and his work? With Richard, it was, I, it was the wonderful social media. It was something that I saw somewhere and Richard's work popped up. He did a brilliant short film called censure and again i loved his style of storytelling i love the cinematography and and i really like the story as well and i just thought oh, this is a really interesting story and a really interesting writer and then i just 
again, <laughs> I'm quite bold in reaching out to people if I like their work. And uh, I managed to somehow find these details. And I just sent him a, a message and I said, look, I've just watched your film. I love good storytelling. I'm, I'm passionate about the craft. And that's what really when I watch a good film or a good story and and it resonates with me or or, or I can empathize with the characters, it takes me into that world. And I think that's the, the, the main reason for coming back. It's just it's such a collaborative po- process, Adam, you know. I might be an actor that's on the screen, but there's so many other brilliant people around you making this whole thing happen. It's a, it's a real team effort. It's like a game of football or anything else that you could have a player that is, you know, you're taking pictures of, but without the team, you don't have anything. And that's exactly the same as the filmmaking process. Uh, you know, I've often thought about what's different or what am I doing differently this time around to the first time uh, uh, in the industry as an actor. And I think a lot of it is mindset. And a lot of it is what I think I'm doing. And in terms of in terms of my approach to the work, my approach to the discipline to the work and reaching out to, to my co-collaborators and creatives with for, it's an interesting one because I, I do think it's I, of course, things have changed with social media and of course, things have changed and things are much more easier now to access and get in touch with people. But I think the the, the fundamental difference is that I'm not sitting and waiting for a phone call. If I like somebody's work, I, I, I would make the effort and I'll reach out genuinely and try to connect with people. And I think when you connect with people, of course, social media allows you to connect with people in a in a much quicker, immediate way. But I've never really been into social media. Even now, literally, uh, I, lock my, I, I haven't been on Facebook. I think my, my last post was like 15 years ago. And it was in the last week that I thought I need to get back onto Facebook. And I locked myself out of Facebook because I got the password or something wrong so many times. They thought I was a fraud trying to get back into my own account. And I got locked out for like three days while they were verifying me and I had to send them passport and everything else. So I'm not good at social media. But the only one that I do use, which I find very useful, is LinkedIn. And that's, a, that's not so much social media, but in a way it is uh, for, for business people, I guess, and professionals. So that's the only one I use. But I am trying to get back into social media. So I can't say that social media was the thing that changed anything for me. It was more a case of actively being interested in other people's work and genuinely authentically going out and and reaching out to people and saying look i love your work this is what i do if what i do and what you do there's something we can do together let's talk and let's see what comes of it and it's just that you know and i never did that the first time around before you know i'd be sitting and waiting and you know waiting for things to happen and in life i've learned you, you can't sit and wait for things to happen you just have to you know, be proactive and, and go out there and get things done. I tell my kids all the time, no one's going to fire the gun in the air and say, go. You've got to always just got to, just, got to just start. So uh, just got to do it. with confines, there's uh, it's quite it's intense. It's there's a lot of uh, really deep and, and uh, um, hard hitting sort of monologue. How did you get yourself into a headspace to give that performance? And, it, and it's ca- captivating. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Um, uh, the, the for me the process with any role is once I've once I've read the role and 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 read it a hundred times and and it's really in my head. It's then a case of probably an instinctive thing from years of doing it. I just connect with that character and and I just try to get out of the way of myself and let that character talk through me. It's just something that happens whereby I just let whatever's coming out. Everything is to serve the story, is to serve that the writer's story. So when you get your when you get out of your own way, and by that I mean you're not trying to affect anything, but you're just genuinely just letting the words speak through you. Uh, and what comes out comes out, you know. And sometimes it comes out in one way, and then you do it again, it comes out in a completely different way. But when you're not trying to force the performance or trying to affect it in a way or i'm going to do it this way or say it that way that's the fun bit of of the acting where you it's the unknown bit which really excites me so to answer your question it's um i just read the part uh, and i try to connect with it with, with the character and what the character is trying to the story the character is trying to tell and 
see where it takes you. As a brilliant teacher of, of mine says, and I still go back to classes now, I think that never will stop. There's always something new to learn. Uh, let go, let flow. And I love that. He always says, he says, let go, let go, let flow. And what will be, will be. What will be, will be. In this film, you're also acting alongside uh, Vivian, uh, who's your Oh, wife. lovely, yeah, the lovely Vivian. Yeah, she's wonderful. Uh, apparently, they, you, there's quite a bit of ad-libbing and you, you, you got to roll a little bit. Yeah, I love I love improvisation. I mean, the Anna Share Theatre, that was it was all improvisation. So for me, if you know the script, I would only ad lib or, or improvise if in the context and if it's right for the piece and if 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 you've got the consent of course of the director we're there to serve the piece but it's the director's medium it's the director's vision so i'm not in the business of you know starting to ad lib or make things up personally this is personal if it's not called for if it's not what the director's asked for so uh, richard said look in this scene i want to add something in if you guys are happy to try it and I'm happy to try anything when it comes to, you know, it's the let go, let flow again. It's like, you know, that's why, that's what I love. So regarding this particular scene, Richard said, look, I want to do this scene. There's no script for it, but it would help the story. If it's helping the story, then you know it makes sense. So he told us the reason. I was like, yeah, this, this. And then we just got together and we just played around with this scene. And Vivian, Viv is fantastic. So she, you know, she can improv as well. It always helps if you're working with someone that is all has the, also the same mindset that let's do this and let's see where it takes us. And it's really exciting because we were doing stuff and it was organic and we didn't know where it was going, but it was true to the characters in that in that situation. You can normally count in your head down from four before there's a cut in a movie. Richard said you memorise practically the whole script. 15 A4 pages of dialogue. When you've got a piece like that, where you've got to carry uh, 15 pages of dialogue and and the discipline to stay true to that character from start to finish, the only way, to my, in my mind, and there is no hard and fast rules to any of this, is whatever works for you, and ultimately, it's the most important is the audience, of course, so... It's uh, um, it's what works for one may not work for another. But for me, it was it was a case of really learning everything. So and being prepared. Preparation was everything. When I turned up on set, I could have done it in any way that Richard wanted. And just again, out of my own way and just let the words talk through me. There was one point we were sat down. The next bit there was I was running up to walls. There was the next. So it was you could you could be free and just really just play with it. So in answer to your question, I wasn't expecting lots of cuts or the, the in film often the freedom that, you know, you're like, OK, I, I've got seen A, B and C tomorrow. So I'll learn those and then and then I don't. Need. So this was different because it was a short period of time. There's 15 pages. It was more of a theatre performance insofar as you don't have the luxury of we've got this scene so I can learn that and I don't have to worry about that yet because I'm doing that on Friday. It was a case of you get one shot, you go in, you deliver. And then however Richard wanted to cut it in post it, after the filming had finished was up to him, you know, so he could have done long shots that went on for a 15 second or half a minute, but preparation was everything. Yeah. There's quite a lot of physicality also in in the film, which I found is really refreshing because after you've been in largely this dark uh, claustrophobic environment then you're outside but you still we still kind of maintain the intensity and I think that was can you just turn it back on or can you can you be Luke around other people or, or do, you, do you how do you feel about when you get into character like that it, for me even even though a lot of the training over the years that I've done is American based technique as I mentioned earlier, all offshoots of the master of our industry, where all of the, the sort of new age naturalistic acting comes from Stanislavski, the prominent teachers of the time that spread the word and, and continued in that same vein of a more authentic natural performance, if you will. Uh, Stella Adler, uh, Lee Strasberg, Sanford Meisner, Uta Hag, and those were the, the teachers at the time saying all of that and and which which you know it's about giving a you know going into the character i find that when i'm when i come out of when i finish the scene of something very intense i actually like to then go back in that moment between that and the next take 
within reason to just being normal again and speaking to the crew. And and it, what makes a big difference is, especially on this, the director, Richard, the DOP, John, Johnny Fry, Jay, who was on doing the sound and, and helping John and the brilliant writer, Neil. And I'm giving a shout out to all of them because it is it directly it, it absolutely influences the performance when you're working with a team of people that allow you to bring the best you know to, to to bring the best out in your performance so it's it's such a collaborative process and when you're doing those emotional scenes the mood on the set and the people that you're working with obviously sometimes you you know you're on a set and the mood isn't good and as a professional actor you just get on with it you know if the mood's not good on the set you're not going to turn around and say oh the mood's not good so you got to the show must go on <laughs> the show must go on so you do it but it really does help when you've got a good mood on the set so whenever i'm working i like to spread the love and keep that mood because it helps everybody you know it helps everybody within their own disciplines to give the best of what they're bringing to the table and it doesn't half help if you've got a good script so what neil, neil basin did there the script was you know a fan, i think it was a fantastic script almost shakespearean in, in a way had little sort of elements which made me think uh, uh it was poetic i love i love his writing i love his writing and for me when you've got a good script it really helps you with the performance and also there were elements within that script that it's difficult not to empathize with or because it's so well written that uh, it all helps with the performance as much as there's there's some uh phys powerful sort of physicality running around and and uh, uh there's also this this torment and uh the kind of weaker side there's there's a scene where you're literally on the floor like you're just dying literally it's uh that's quite quite something do you do you like that that balance i mean i mean you're a big you're a big guy you you know you could be you could be a bond villain no question i i, I put my my hat my my ticket in the hat there <laughs> <laughs> you could you could you could be you could be the guy but so do you do you do you um i mean some people i guess probably don't relish being you know like a weaker character i i imagine you your ego is must be fairly you know neutral in that regard, you're you obviously clearly happy being vulnerable as you are being, you know, physical. I've seen some of I've seen some clips from your other work and machine guns and explosions, horses. You really are an action man in many regards, um, and uh, it's great to see a vulnerable side too. I think that's brave. I am a physical person. I've I did martial arts for many years. I've got two black belts in it. And the one thing that martial arts taught me, the more you do martial arts, the more peaceful you become, the more humble you become. And for me, there's no desire to act or be a tough guy. I think it, 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 it for me, it's the, ch the challenges and the greatest strength thing is in showing vulnerability, vulnerability, uh, compassion, humanity, love. And I think that the more you're, you, you, the more you do that stuff, it ne it's never i've never been impressed with tough guys it doesn't impress me so for me there's no desire so playing the vulnerability and the human side for instance the next film that i'm doing i'm working with a brilliant director a feature film which is i'm playing an ex-serviceman and i'm working with uh um i've got a meeting with with one of the people that, that an ex-serviceman that started help for heroes and the, char the character that i'm playing is an ex-serviceman that is trying to fit back into society and this is a tough guy who served in the army who's seen horrific things and he's he's back and he's just trying to fit back into normal society so there's a lot of research i'm doing at the moment so i can't say too much more those those are the real tough guys running around acting tough is is of course we can do that when it's but i like to show the the, the vulnerability uh, of the human condition um as much as the other parts, you know. Light and shade. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what makes us human beings, you know? Absolutely. You know, cinema in itself, if you can make people laugh, if you can make people cry. I, I did a I did a filmmaking workshop, filmed this scene. It was about a woman who'd been uh, kidnapped and she'd returned home and she was talking about the years that she'd missed with her family. And I wrote this monologue uh, 
uh, in literally about two minutes. It's I, it just stream of consciousness, blah, blah, blah. Literally, there were tears coming out of my eyes. I just, it was a high pressure day for me. <laughs> I, was, I was there mentoring these guys doing the filming. And I said to, I just said to the guys, look, if it doesn't move me, how's it gonna move an audience? You know? Yeah. Why am I gonna hold back on that? I love that, Adam. And I, I love what you said there. And, and I, I think it is when you tell a story the human side of a story. And I think when we talk about vulnerability or whether it's a victim of, of something or whatever the case may be in the case of the ex-servicemen coming back and showing the human side of trying to get back into normal society after the, the horrors and some of the research that I've done, you know, war is needless to say is horrific. And it, and it the more research I'm doing, I'm just thinking it's so incumbent on all of us to try to and it sounds simplistic and idealistic, but really to find solutions and compassion in humanity before resulting to, to, to combat. But I know we're in the real world and, you know, these things are happening right now and have been, you know, probably continue happening. But in our own small little way, and I, and I know how small a way it is, so I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, we're actors, we're telling stories. But if we can tell meaningful stories that connect with people with the ultimate aim of showing humanity or showing a a, a social impact issue or or a a a, a situation uh, um, that that needs addressing and alerting people um then then those are the stories that that you know do resonate with me and like you said the, the what you wrote the monologue um is coming from the heart and it's you know it moved you and i'm sure it would move other people you know you know, if it's told, if something's told truthfully, you know, so those, that's why going back to when you say, you know, you're not afraid of showing vulnerability, I, I think, no, absolutely. It's, it's what makes us human, you know, and it's, uh, if we can somehow raise the level of consciousness or somehow you want to add some sort of value without being pretentious about it. And I'm aware that you have to be careful not to be pretentious. You know, I'm, a, I'm an actor, but in our own way, if you can tell stories that, that carry some meaning, you know. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, tapping into a universal truth is just, you know, yeah. something that comes from right inside your chest. And uh, you just I think, you know, when you orate those words, when you make it concrete, because it's one thing to write stuff down, you go, yeah, yeah well, that looks pretty good. But actually, when you say the words out loud, it can it is suddenly something else. As I'm sure, you know, you've probably experienced a lot is when you get deep into something that creative and it's psychological and uh, artistic a lot of people they don't want to know how it comes together they want to see a final product they would you know i told people i worked on a movie called chicken run and they went i've never heard of it what does that mean that means nothing but of course now chicken run is a thing people go oh that one oh the movie yeah that was awesome yeah yeah did you meet mel gibson no no <laughs> uh you know and uh yes so it, during this process of trying to write stuff and meet producers meet directors talk finance think about logistically how it could come together and just talk about the script you know if you read my script does this work it's the collaborative process isn't it i mean it's um <clears throat> excuse me it's what I love. It's uh, it's it's that brainstorming together, reading something, and and often I find sometimes you know when you when you have a script and then you sit down with the director and you just do a line reading together, things come out for the writer, the director when you actually do a, a reading of it, that and you know you're making notes and you see the writer making notes and director making, because once you've written something down, you have a vision in your mind and then you've got actors, real life people doing it, and then that in itself inspires and gives you uh inspiration for further ideas or okay that worked or that wasn't in the script and but it just came out just all so organically or let's put that in or whatever the case is so the whole thing is such a collaborative process that everybody and i mean that everybody within a production you know you're you're all working to the same goal and the same end to to, to tell that story truthfully and then hopefully in some way impact i hope positively the audience and, and get them to feel something, you know, and if, if you've got a, a, a story that's going to 
help people go away and think and reflect and become better people in some way. Again, I'm aware not to sound pretentious because I know this, you know, oh, this is the other thing as well. You know, as you said earlier, as you get older, you know, you, you start to reflect on your own flaws. And, you know, especially when you have kids and you think, oh, you, know, you want to be the best version of yourself, hopefully, and, and teach your kids to be compassionate, loving human beings. And and I always say this to my, my, my kids, you know, whoever you meet, there's very little that, that separates us, you know, and I always say there's you and I are not so different wherever, you know, and I'm lucky enough to have traveled a lot in, over the years, been to lots of countries and there's there's very little that separates us. It's ignorance very little so that separates us as human beings you know so it's again we're getting a bit deep here but you know this is what i think but i i would definitely recommend you know as as a writer director you know just you know experience it being read off yeah. the page you know yeah 100 percent. i think and then and then take it from there that's awesome <laughs> The crewing confines is relatively tiny compared to what you'd be used to on a Hollywood set. Does that affect your process in any way? It doesn't make any difference to me. You know, I'm doing something at the minute. I'm back in the UK now and then I fly back out in a few weeks, I think. Uh, I'm doing a, 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 it's a TV, an Apple TV series in Greece. And um, lots and lots of people on set. Lovely crew, lovely, lovely team. It makes no difference to me whether there's 100 people or, or three people. The process is the same. You have the character and at the end of the day, you're on your own. When when you hear action, it's you, it's the other actors and it's the situation that you're in. And it's just literally that world that you're in, that you've created, that you have to convince yourself that, that you know, you've got to bring truth to it. So it really makes no difference, you know, whether there's three people in the room or 500 people it, for me. Uh, it's you, it's the other actors, your co-workers uh, um, and the scene and, the, and, the, and that imaginary set of circumstances, as we call it, <laughs> you know, and then that's and that's it. So with. Um, uh, um, yeah, so for me, no, Confines was a bit different in so far as it's a uh, it's 15 pages of dialogue on my own and then intercut with um, scenes with Viv and, and, you know, some of the others, the other scenes. But essentially, it's different in that you've got a, a train of thought that you're going and this you're going. I mean, with, as I mentioned, with Neil's writing, it's taking you on this journey. So it's different than doing a, a you know, a, a scene with somebody else where you're bouncing off each other. So there was that slight nuance, but the process is all the same. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I found it, uh, you know, very... Uh, engaging and powerful and I'm really looking forward to seeing where Confines goes and obviously seeing uh, more of your work. Uh, I can't wait to see oh, this, thank uh, you. this thing. Apple TV is one of my uh, go-tos for quality entertainment. I'm I'm an all right with Netflix and okay with Disney but if you really want really high quality I think Apple TV is kind of where it's at um so yeah well i it sounds it sounds like a great a great uh project you're a bodyguard right well, thank you Adam. yeah yeah i'm playing a bodyguard and this another another tough guy um the the um yeah just to say uh, thank you adam i feel really humble grateful that, that we're having this interview i All will right. i will bid you adieu it's been an absolute oh, pleasure thank you uh, it's my pleasure mate my pleasure really mm -hmm.